Hey, Most Amazing Top 10 family, I'm your host, Chay Reyna. Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. The reverse song theory has been terrorizing North America for so long. Ever since the devil was in rock and roll, parents have been terrified that bands are leaving messages to corrupt their poor sweet babies into satanic monsters. And sometimes they were wrong, and other times they were right. And that's why I'm bringing you today's list of top 10 scary messages in songs played in reverse. As always, I would love it if you would like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification notification bell. Also, stick around for the whole video because I'm going to be doing some more pet shoutouts which you guys love so much. If anyone at home needs more Most Amazing Top 10 content, check us out on Instagram and Facebook and we are starting to do Facebook exclusive content that you guys should all go check out as soon as you can. If anyone needs some Most Amazing merch, check out the link below in the description. Use the offer code MA10 to get $5 off, which means you can grab a shirt for 10 bucks, which is an amazing deal. And without taking any longer, let's get into this list. At number 10 we have Snowblind by Styx. Alright, we're gonna kick off this list with a classic song that was at the tail end of the Satan and rock and roll movement. This song came out in 1981 and punk rock was about to switch the focus of the devil being in music to delinquents wanting to start an anarchist movement to overthrow the government. Maybe news outlets should stop blaming music and musicians for civil unrest and focus on the billionaires that are crippling the economy and social services and using their wealth to hang out with people like Jeffrey Epstein and do horrible things with minors. But this is a conversation for another video. This stick song became a hot button of discussion because when you play it in reverse it sounds like the lyrics are saying Satan moves through my voice. Let's have a listen and let me know what you think. Try so hard to make it so the word Satan sounds pretty clear and I think that's what got eyes focused on this song, but the rest of the sentence seems like just a jumbled mess. But that didn't stop the PMRC from using this song as an example of why albums need stricter labeling. At number 9 we have Queen with Another One Bites the Dust. Now we're going to move a year back in time to 1980. Another One Bites the Dust is of course the Queen hit that is one of the greatest fight intro songs ever. When Floyd Mayweather used this as his entrance music against Arturo Gotti, it was just mean. Theme music for the ultra confident Floyd Mayweather. He has a spectacular smile, and the Gaddy crowd responds to the mode of transportation. But other than a great song to play right before you beat someone into a bloody pulp, it's also thought that this song has some subliminal messages in it. The accusation is that when you play it in reverse, it sounds like the Queen song is saying, It's fun to smoke marijuana. Let's have a listen. As much as I don't think this was intentionally thrown in there, this one sounds a lot like it's fun to smoke marijuana. And depending on what country you're from, your opinion on whether or not it's actually fun to smoke marijuana will probably change. In Canada, you can buy the stuff in stores, but in China you get the death penalty, which can really influence your opinion on the drug. At number 8 we have the Beatles with Revolution 9. If you ever heard this song before, it's already creepy as is. It's not even a song really, it's just a series of recordings cobbled together that gives the ambiance of some sort of psychological torture. And if the original the original track wasn't enough to make you never want to turn the song on again, it also has a creepy tune playing in the background that I bet you didn't know about. Number nine, number nine, number nine, under 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 This track has sparked a bunch of conspiracy theories, one of them being that the rest of the Beatles were behind John Lennon's death. Some people think this is also evidence that Paul McCartney is actually dead and his whole career after his car crash has been some sort of hoax to manipulate the public. Imagine being Paul McCartney and you're alive and everyone else is like, hey, you're not the real Paul McCartney, you're a fake. And you're like, dude, it's me, it's me. At number 7 we have Motorhead with Nightmare the Daytime. If you're a heavy metal fan, you probably know a lot about Motorhead and it should be no surprise that one of the titans of the genre hid some dark messages in their music. It was rock and roll and metal that started the whole world worshipping the devil music in the first place. It only makes sense that they continued the tradition with a little backmasking. If you are unfamiliar with backmasking, it's when you intentionally put a message in a song that can be heard in reverse. Unlike the other songs we've had on this list so far that are just a coincidence, this next chunk is meant to be in there and heard by the people. And 
that's just a little piece from how it starts. It continues with narrow minded flights of paranoia. I and people like me will always prevail. You will never stifle our free speech in this country or any country around the world because we will fight forever. If that doesn't make you want to get up and fight for freedom, then nothing will. Let's go, Motorhead. At number six, we have Hell Awaits by Slayer. We are back in the realm of hell and metal with this Slayer track. You don't really need to hide a message in a song titled Hell Awaits. I think you get the message across before anyone even listens to the track, but hidden in a backwards message is a very on brand message for this song. <laughs> When the song is played forward, those voices just sound like demonic ramblings, but when you flip them over and play them in reverse, the clear message of recruiting people to the Dark Lord is right in your face. Slayer wants you to join the Dark Army and probably do hell stuff. I don't really know what that means. It could be sacrificing a virgin in the moonlight and summoning one of the kings of the underworld, or just a nice potluck. At number five, we have Grim Reaper Final Scream. The band and song title are both fear inducing, and it's no surprise that there is a creepy message lurking in the shadows. At the beginning of this song, there is a bunch of grumbled noises, but once you play them in reverse, you can hear them clear. You in hell. If any of you didn't pick up on that, it's pretty clear that he's saying see you in hell. This is another case of backmasking, and I read a few different reasons on why Grim Reaper might have concealed this in their song. Some people think this could have been a hidden message to a rival band or a death threat to an unknown person, while other people think the message see you in hell was just a reference to their previous album titled see you in hell. At number four, we have Soundgarden with 665. This is probably the funniest one on the list. It seems like Soundgarden saw everyone putting backmasking into their tracks and they wanted to do their own spin on it. Like don't do what all the other kids are doing, have a little originality. Take what people have done before you and improve on it. This case in backmasking is so close to the other ones but also so different. Very revolutionary. hear that wrong. He is saying Santa is king. Not Satan, but Santa. Trust me, you aren't mishearing this. If you don't believe me, later in the song he says, my Christmas king. But if you really are going to praise anyone as your giant savior, I would pick Santa. He travels around the globe dropping off presents for kids and is the poster boy for body positivity. The guy hasn't tried to get in shape for like 500 years. Also, I'm a big fan of Christmas. Wrap me up in a comfy sweater and feed me gingerbread until my blood sugar is at nuclear levels. And I'll be happy as an elf becoming a dentist. I support the backmasking in Soundgarden, for sure. At number three, we have Deep Purple with Stormbringer. Next, we have some backmasking that has a movie tie-in. If you've ever listened to some old rock and roll or metal and you hear some demonic gibberish at any point, you might want to play it in reverse. Based on this list, there's a good chance that there are some twisted lyrics on the other end. Except for that Christmas thing. All hail our Christmas Lord Santa. May he forever bring us presents and enough turkey to make 1,000 turkey sandwiches. In the song Stormbringer by Deep Purple, there's a chunk in the song at the beginning that is apparently pulled right from the movie The Exorcist. This one you're going to have to trust me on. There are some creepy backmasking lyrics in this song. I don't know if they're directly pulled from the movie, but they certainly sound like they are. The reason you're going to have to trust me on this is because I can't play them for you on this channel without beeping them out. It's not exactly viewer friendly, so if you want, you can go Google Deep Purple Stormbringer in reverse and then listen to it for yourself. I promise you won't be disappointed. At number two, we have Marilyn Manson Tourniquet. Marilyn Manson has become world famous for becoming one of the eeriest dudes around. There's definitely an argument that he is one of the most important goth icons who has ever existed, next to the plague dude. The plague dude is like probably a little higher than him. On top of that, he is very well educated, and in interviews he speaks like a Harvard professor. And there was also a rumor about him and his ribs. It might have just been my generation, but everyone spread the exact same rumor about Marilyn Manson, which is 100% not true. Unless it is, I don't know, maybe it is, I, uh, but I don't think it is. On top of all the frightening imagery that Manson would put right in front of your face, there's also a ton of nightmarish themes he would be hiding in his lyrics through backmasking. Like the song Dope Hat where it repeatedly says kill yourself, and in the song Tourniquet where it says If you didn't catch that, he's saying I'm at my lowest point of vulnerability. Very dark and depressing. Are you doing okay, Marilyn? If you need some help, man, you can come hang out with me. We'll go get coffee, we'll talk it out. Like, it's gonna be fine. 
And for the number one spot, we have Judas Priest, Better By You, Better Than Me. This is probably one of the most high profile cases of alleged lyrics in reverse. First I'll have all of you watching listen to the song and then I'll give you the full breakdown. Being straightforward, I don't hear anything, and Judas Priest has made it very clear that there is no secret message in the song. But in 1985, two young men who were listening to the song said they could hear Judas Priest saying, do it, do it. Raymond Belknap and James Vance were hanging out, consuming some cannabis and alcohol, while listening to Better By You, Better Than Me. Then they went to a church and shot themselves with a shotgun. Belknap was killed instantly, but Vance survived, and was able to give a statement to the police, the media, and the entire country. It's clear that both these men were struggling with mental illness, and it's a shame that they weren't able to get the aid that they needed. However, this was at the height of the satanic music craze. Parents of both the victims sued Judas Priest, and the legal battle went on for years and gained major media attention. Judas Priest eventually won the battle, but it took a long time. Time. All right, everyone, that is our list. Thank you all for tuning in. As promised, I'm going to be doing some more pet shoutouts. Remember, if you want me to shout out your pet, you can hit me up on Instagram. How it works is Monday to Friday, I will be picking five pets every day from the messages. It resets each day, so you can message back the next day if you didn't get picked the day before. This gives a chance for everyone to have an equal opportunity to get a shout out, and it helps me control my inbox, which has so many pet shoutouts, which is awesome. I love you guys messaging me to do that, but. I do need to keep it under control. And without taking any longer, let's get into these pets. First we have Emma with her boxer Odin and Sherlock her mini schnauzer. Amazing job naming these little guys, they are both so cute handsome boys. Next Steve wanted a shout out for his cats Peanut Butter and Marshmallow. Great names for these cats, amazing combo all around and I'm pretty sure you can figure out which one's which. Next we have Tucker, he's got a big old smile and the lighting is just amazing. Who is he? Michelle want a shout out for her dog Luna. Look at her big old smile, very cute, I'm a huge fan. And finally we have Aileen who sent in a picture of a cat Orion. Just all snuggled up looking so cute, such a perfect way to cap off this list. And everyone that is it, thank you all so much for tuning in. As always I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe and hit the little notification bell. If anyone at home needs more most amazing top 10 content, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And we are starting to do Facebook exclusive content, so you're going to want to go over to our Facebook page and check that out because there's going to be a lot of good stuff over there. If you need merch, there's a link below. Click on the link, use the offer code MA10 to get $5 off of whatever merch you buy. It means you could grab a shirt for 10 bucks, which is a sweet deal. Until next time, I've been Chaterena and I've got some rock and roll to listen to.